Hey guys, it's Tim coming at you with a brand new Jurassic World related video for this week. And if you're interested in hearing more Jurassic World related content, feel free to click that subscribe button and the bell next to it to be immediately informed whenever a new video goes up. So for today's video, I'm going to talk about one of the most well-known scientific principles that was presented in the original Jurassic Park. Chaos Theory. Now before I get into this, I want to state up front, I'm neither a physicist nor a mathematician, so I could very easily be getting portions of this wrong or not understanding them correctly. But this is me stating what chaos theory is, based on my own understanding and the research I've done on it. So if I get anything wrong, I apologize in advance. With that said, what is chaos theory? Chaos theory states that, in a complex system, initial conditions are very sensitive, and they're dependent on these initial systems. But because they're so specific, it's basically impossible to predict the outcome, even if you understand how the system works. The big example of this, and where chaos theory first started, is with weather. See, in the 1960s at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, a man named Edward Lorenz created a computer system to predict the weather. And he was able to take the different aspects of weather like heat, humidity, wind, and so forth, and accurately predict how the weather system would operate down to six decimal places. And this machine seemed like it'd be the one to be able to predict the weather for the future. However, at some point, Lorenz attempted to manually put in the information, but instead of doing six decimal places, he used three. But the thing is, weather is a non-linear equation. So, unlike a linear equation, say, firing a cannonball out of a cannon, where slightly altering the starting values won't radically affect where the cannonball lands, this change in the weather system caused the entire system to radically change what its results were. So what, you just don't shorthand it down to three decimal places and problem solved, right? Not quite. See, weather is very complicated and basically encompasses every molecule of the Earth's atmosphere. So there really is no way for us to put it into an equation form that won't require us to shorthand it in some way. So the end result of this is that, even though we understand how weather works, we really can't predict it because the complex system won't allow for it. That being said, there is another aspect to chaos theory, and it's the idea that even in a complex system that has unpredictable results, it will still often try to seek out one specific situation that it ends up in. Essentially meaning that even complex systems will try to reach some level of equilibrium at some point. For example, imagine if you had a town of 10,000 people, and in order to accommodate these people, we have a supermarket, two swimming pools, a library, and three churches. Now let's say that 3,000 of those people moved away, so we now only have 7,000 people living in the town. Then the supermarket realizes that in order to keep itself afloat, it needs to have at least 8,000 regular customers. So, what's the end result? The supermarket closes down. But in a town of people, we don't stop there, because you need the supermarket for food to survive. So people start moving away, and those who are in the town start to demand a new supermarket be put in. So then, another company comes in with their own supermarket, and they start it up, and people are happy with it, they come to shop at it, and they're making money to start off with, even getting more people to move back into the town because it now can sustain its people. But because we still don't have those 8,000 people, the supermarket will still eventually shut down. And this system with the people in the supermarket will basically continue to repeat itself, but the various factors of people moving into the town, moving out, and different supermarkets coming in and out will change the effect of when these specific things happen. But eventually, the supermarket will close down, people will move away, people will demand a new supermarket, a new one will come in, and so on and so forth. It just won't happen the exact same way each time. So even though we can't predict exactly when these things will happen, we can predict roughly what will happen at some point as the complex system tries to reach an equilibrium. But what does this mean for chaos theory? Well, it means chaos theory states two things. 
Number one, complex systems have some kind of underlining order to them, no matter how chaotic they seem. In the movie, Dr. Ian Malcolm states that life finds a way. Basically meaning that even though at that point in the movie everything seems well regulated and down to a scientific T, eventually there's going to be the foregone conclusion of dinosaurs being placed in a park will not be a good idea. We just don't know exactly when that will happen. Though in the movie it was pretty immediately after that. The other thing it states is that small changes in the original parameters of a complex system will radically change its results. I talked about the weather thing before, but another example of this would be shooting a pool ball. You can know the mass of the ball, the angle of the table, the force in which you hit the shot, and in theory, using this information, you should be able to accurately predict where the ball will be at any given point in the future. Possibly even hours away. But actually, because of things like small imperfections in the ball, small divots in the table, you really won't be able to predict more than a few seconds in the future before your carefully calculated equation falls apart because of outside parameters. And in a nutshell, that's what chaos theory is. That nature is unpredictable, but will try to reach some sort of natural state of equilibrium. But what do you guys think? Do you subscribe to chaos theory? Well, as always, let us know down in the comments. And like I stated at the beginning, if you're interested in hearing more Jurassic World related content, feel free to click that subscribe button and the bell next to it to be immediately informed whenever a new video goes up. But until next time, this has been Tim from the Hybrid Network, signing out.